Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on Melbury Estate. As you can see, we're taking the harvesters back to the yard and we're also taking the tractor for a very well deserved wash. I'm just hoping they're going to be able to follow me okay. They seem to be doing a very good job so far. Negotiating the gate and everything. Um, so yeah, we'll just take it back to the yard and we will try and find a pressure washer if we've got one. We'll drop it off just there and head back round again. I don't think the harvesters need a wash yet. They haven't done an awful lot of work. Yeah, they should be okay. Uh, thinking about it, that this probably isn't the best yard for them, just because it's not very big. Um, and we do have other yards as well. Uh, we don't have a pressure washer, so this should be good just here. So yeah, we'll wash the tractor, we'll put it away, and then we'll slot out the harvesters. And then we have got a mod to try out. I don't know if it's any good, but that is why I've downloaded it, just to give it a try. There we go, that's got most of the grime off. So we'll just put this back here. There we go. Right, so the toughest part here is going to be turning this thing around with the other one behind it. It's not going to be easy. But we probably should stop the other one. Okay, so that is ready to leave again. Oh, we're getting a bit of lag. I'll just have to go and delete some files from the hard drive. Video files, that is. Um, that tends to speed it up. I found that it's one of the main causes of lag for me. So, one second. Right, I'm back. That should make a difference. There was 205 gigabytes of recorded files just from this week alone and it really does add up with fraps. They are fairly large file sizes. Uh, I only record in 24 frames per second but it still really does take up the space. I think I get through 4 gigabytes every, must be every minute and a half to 2 minutes. Not long at all. That's why I have to really render these videos down, unfortunately, just so I can actually upload them. Because my internet is so bad that I can't even upload a full HD video. Um, it takes me a night to upload just one 20 minute video in 720p. Um, you know, one day I might be able to do full HD and I can't wait until I can because, you know, this day and age, you should be able to get better service than what I get. Um, 1.2 megabits per second download, 0 0.3 megabits per second upload. That is pretty bad, <laughs> as you'll probably know. It's a wonder that I can actually get into my own multiplayer server, to be honest, with the internet which I get. Um, but that's enough, uh, enough about the internet. It's a depressing thing as it is, the speeds that I get. And one of the worst things is you pay almost the same amount as someone who gets a much better speed. Okay then, so this farm up here, I don't know if it's got any more space than the other one. It certainly looks bigger and we haven't got any machinery up here as such. There might be a few bits and bobs, uh, but nothing really that considerable. So we should have a, a nice amount of space here. The problem is going to be getting in the gateway, which I didn't really think of. You know, it might be one of these times when we have to reverse into a field just to get into uh, the, the actual farmyard. We'll have to block the way a second. Yeah, the headlights turn themselves on when I cancel the 
follow me mod. The good thing about the harvesters is the, the rear axle, how it turns. Yeah, these are good sized sheds, we'll put them in here. Getting them out again might be a bigger challenge. We'll worry about that when we get to it. There probably is a more suitable barn somewhere. Seem to have done that. This corner seems to be the toughest. But we're through. We'll just dump it in here and then we'll move on to see the next mod. Okay, so the mod is, and I don't know the price, I've not really looked at it at all yet, so this could be a real gamble downloading it. I don't even know which category it's in. I should have done a bit more planning actually. Here it is, it is the Roper Euro Mouse 3. Um, a very, very big machine from what I've seen. Um, and it's designed to pick up the sugar beet which we've put in the field and put it into a lorry. Um, obviously the price is a bit high. So what we're gonna have to do is rent it um, along with a lorry. So we'll have to do that now. We may have to take out a loan. Um, you can probably see here that this is probably not the best thing to be doing because we're gonna be making a loss on the sugar beet overall. However, it's a good opportunity to do a mod review of this as I haven't really done any mod reviews recently. A lot of people have been asking for them and um, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to do a mod spotlight. So we'll do a mod spotlight. This can be it and the rest of this episode might be focusing on that more than anything. And I read the description and comments of it and someone did say that it had a few problems. Uh, so we're just gonna have to, to buy it and see what it has to offer and also what glitches it's got with it. Okay then, so here we are first of all in our lorry, the Tatra, love this lorry. And uh, I couldn't choose the color unfortunately in the, uh, the renting shop, so. It's just the colour it gave us. I've not used this colour before, so I guess it's new. Uh, but we're going to take it up to the field and get it into position. Someone did say it would be easier just to stack it all in one pile, because you know I did multiple piles of sugar beet. Someone also had a comment saying it looked like manure. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think of that, but I guess you. I mean, we've got a point, it does look a little bit like manure, but then if you look closely, it definitely is sugar beet. Yes, I would be disappointed if I just harvested a whole field of manure. Anyway, let's put this here and we'll go and get it. So here it is, and first impression is fantastic. It looks very well modelled, and I was looking at some pictures of it in real life, and it does actually look like a splitting image. So looking good, I think possibly, I can't say for sure, but possibly I think it's a conversion from FS13. So let's jump into it and have a look what it's got to offer in here. We get a steering wheel and we get lots of instruments and screens and speakers. So I'm not short of detail, looks like a CB as well, CB radio and information sheets and Looking good overall. Now we've now got to negotiate the road. It's quite an interesting thing to drive actually. Having like these rollers on the front, which obviously unfold. The steering feels interesting too. Like I said, I've not tested this yet, so it might not work at all. Um, but I'm hoping it is going to. 
The download link and the credits are below from what I'm hoping is the original download site. Right then, so we're in the field and this should make it easier now because we can actually have space to unfold it. Luckily it wasn't too far from the main road. Um, but yes, let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got IC enabled on this one, apparently. Um, oh, I'm doing something. Oh yes, we do. There we go. So we've got the elevator work light. We have got the front work lights, rear work light, left work light, swivel seat. Well, that's interesting. How do you do that? Hmm. I'm not sure how you do these things yet, but counterweight, front arm, pickup table, um, the elevator last part, and the elevator. We have then got the activation of it, so I'm guessing, yeah, that actually turns it on. Unfold the elevator, fold the pickup, and then I think that is actually all of it. I could be missing something, but I think that's all. Uh, so we've obviously unfolded it now, accidentally. We should probably do everything from inside the cab. Oh, that makes it easier. So key four is the pickup table, and that is controlled with num with the numpad, key eight and five. So key eight obviously raises it, which is already up, and key five lowers it. And you can raise and lower it as much or as little as you want. So that is pretty good, and key 5 is the front arm, many controls here. Key 4 on the numpad moves the arm to the left, oh yes. And key 6 moves it to the right, there's a lot of things to remember here. Key 8 moves, moves the arm up and down, key 5, oh no, key 8 moves it up, key 5 moves it down. Key 7 moves the arm forwards, and key 9 moves it backwards. That retracts it. Next we've got the counterweight, key four. Oh crikey, it's this massive thing on the back. I didn't realize. Key four moves it to the left, key six to the right, and key five um, puts it in the transport position. Oh, so that just makes it jump back. Um, so I have to remember that. Key 11 and 12, elevator and elevator last part, they're not on yet because we haven't turned it on yet. Key nine, inside the cab, is a swivel seat. Ooh, we're moving. It's key four, key six, and key five. Push your back in the center automatically. Next we have got O, which is the steering mode. Um, this changes it from crab mode, steering with the front axle and the rear axle, or in both axles. So we've got plenty of different controls here. There's crab, as you'll remember from a telehandler. Um, then we've got front axle only, yep, and then we have got rear axle only, and then we should have both, yes we do. Uh, then we've got the work lights, that's just simply on and off. N is the left work lights, it's on the back, M is the right, again, just there. K is the elevator, work light. Love the shadows, that looks really good. And R is reset weight, so not sure exactly. But I think we should probably get into it now. We've probably looked at it for long enough. So let's get into it now. Z unfolds this elevator. We probably shouldn't go too close to the lorry trailer because I'll probably take it out. Um, and then yeah, we've got other controls as well. Key F11. Oh, that's going to be an issue. I record with F12, and you have to use that button to actually move the elevator. So that does make it a little bit too difficult. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is making it very difficult. Right then. So what you didn't see is just me unfolding the elevator just because it is the same button as Fraps, I could change it. Probably should do in the future. Um, but if we just position it a bit better here, 
obviously I've never used this thing before so I'm not very good so I just position myself a bit better here show you zero percent it's now filling up that's emptying the harvester because we're not close enough so now I need to get back to my control centre here go on number four and we need to move the pickup table up and down uh, down is probably the best option here we've then got the front arm which we also need to do um, there is a lot of controls on this thing it's not easy that is now feeding it through as you can see should move that for you it is working and this is definitely easier than using a front loader especially that T4 I can you imagine Ah, oh, it's 13 tonnes so far. So it's quite literally eating the pile and putting it into here. The animation is fantastic. I don't know why I've never used this mod before, you know. Twenty five tons. Really, the lorry needs to be moved backwards and forwards to level it off a bit. Because we're getting way too much in the middle. Eighty one percent full now. This really is fantastic. I love this mod. That is fifty two tons, and I've just realized something that is over the weight limit. Um, next time we will stop at a more sensible. I think because that is really heavy for UK roads anyway so turn it off and we'll get into the lorry we'll move this massive thing and the next obstacle is the cell point which is really tight if you've seen my other episodes you will know how tight that is I could only, well yeah, I could do it in a traction trailer, but in a lorry, I'm not sure. I'm now trying my best to drive at a more realistic speed. I think a few of you picked up that I was being a bit erratic with my driving, so calming down a bit. So I drive at a bit more of a realistic speed. I think for this road, with the weight we've got on the back, this is plenty. But yeah, I love that mod, the Roper Euro Moss or Mouse 3. Um, yeah, download link is below. Highly recommend it. I'm not sure what was actually wrong with it. Someone did say they were having issues. Um, we seem to have been okay there. But um, I guess. I might not have covered everything. These pedestrians. Hey, this is a tight road. I'm surprised there is a sugar beet plant down here. Oh, it's actually the pub, isn't it? Or the station. 
how old the station? Mind the business, man. And uh, we're not going to make it around this corner in one piece, so we'll have to reverse and then go back round. Right then, so we are actually at the store, which means we can sell it, and we might be able to get some money back. Yeah, it always turns to wheat, I don't know why. Well, it was okay. £16,500 for 56 tonnes, was it? remember um, obviously if that was wheat or canola oh you should look where you're going strolling across there as if you own the place some people just don't mind about being run over yeah if that was canola wow <laughs> we'll be rich So, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed this episode and that maybe it's given you some inspiration of what you want to download next in the way of mods. That does seem to be a very good mod, but I'm pretty sure it is conversion from FS13. Um, but, yeah, next time we will try and clear all of those heaps of sugar beet. But, for today, we will just drive back to the field and we will park this up you'll notice we're in real time because obviously it's very expensive to hire these pieces of equipment we've hired the lorry or it's uh, a contractor we could say um, and obviously the the roper there is also rented as well which is very expensive three hundred thousand pounds to buy so uh, yeah we will just head back and park up and we'll resume this next week. We've of course got the remote control Monday, tomorrow. And uh, spin tyres, I probably will do another episode the week after this week because uh, I haven't got another tractor yet, a remote control tractor yet. We will do. But I think because a lot of people are requesting spin tyres, um, we will be doing another one of those. So that is all to come in the future. Thanks for watching. And I do recommend giving this a go. So until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.